behalf of the family, I'd like to welcome you here this afternoon to this service where we gathered to celebrate Michael and his life, to remember him, his personality, shared memories and moments that you had together, to contribute to him and to give thanks for his life. Please, would you be seated? The ancient Roman philosopher Cicero wrote this, Even when a friend is dead, he is still alive. He is alive because his friends still cherish him and remember him and long for him. This means there is happiness even in his death. He ennobles the existence of those who are left behind. You should all have a copy of the order of service that you might like to refer to during our time here this afternoon. And you'll see now that we have an opportunity to sing on the first of two hymns, and the words have been printed in our order of service. I'm going to suggest that we stand together to sing, but if you are more comfortable than do, please remain seated. Thank you.
Richard Macefield, members meeting Mike in London in Preston Place in 1970. Mike was visiting from Toronto and gave Richard a job back in the Toronto office. It was the depth of a very cold Canadian winter, so it was a bit of a shock to the system for a young Australian boy. But Richard grew to head the business in a very key market, just one of the many examples of bringing good people through the ranks that Mike actually. In 1971, Stanley sent Mike to sort out the Felder's Australian GSA, which was Australian Express in Melbourne at the time. Mike's time in the business, in the business at that stage was short-lived as he didn't really get on to the owner of the GSA. So Mike joined TAA Airlines and kicked off their new business of AAT Tours as its managing director. In fact, today, AAT Kings is part of our group and is Australia's leading inbound tour operator. Les Cox, another long-term buddy of Mike, rec recollects that in 1976 he'd not been in Australia long from the UK and applied to Mike for the job as a sales rep. At that time, Mike was about to lose another rep who was heading overseas, so in fact there's another Mike project in the format. Les, like many others, puts his entire career down to Mike taking him on in those early days. In 1977, Mike took the AAT team, to AAT team for lunch and announced he was leaving to head up the company where he originally worked as a mail boy, back to Trafalgar Tours and back to London. It was in the UK where Justin, his much loved son, was born. One of Justin's earliest memories of himself and his dad was playing on the floor of Mike's office, which at that time overlooked the Royal News. He, re he recollects watching in awe as the royal carriages in all their splendour rolled home from an official outing. And this memory is particularly important to Justin today because this afternoon, although it's separated by 40 years, we'll be only metres away from that very location when we're at the movies. Sports, and particularly ball sports, was one of the great pleasures Mike loved throughout his life. On a winter's day, Justin's life at home would be painful as his father would often flick TV channels between football and rugby and golf and American football and then probably golf and then football again. And if they were really lucky, <coughs> he'd find test match cricket and Australian rules for all teams. <laughs> Another of his memories comes from about 35 years ago when his dad and he went to watch a small second division London football side play very average football. The ground had a lonesome advertising audience promoting Trafalgar tours. There were very few sponsors at the time. Little did they know that this team, just like Trafalgar, would grow to become the best in the business. Years later, in 2005 in fact, Justin and Mike, with the Tottenham family, watched the greatest ever game of football in the same ground. Chelsea beating Barcelona 14. Despite being geographically separated on different continents, Justin and Mike spent a lot of time keeping in touch on FaceTime. Louise tells me that Mike was so proud that Justin found his vocation and today has a successful career as a photographer. In the early 90s, Mike moved to Bermuda and played golf there. Oh, sorry, ran the business. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very special time for many reasons. Not only was the Travel Corporation growing from strength to strength, but privately, Louise and Mike were very happy there. They met wonderful friends who shared their passion for sports and outdoor life. Conversations would carry on for hours. And when they exhausted the rugby, the cricket, the football and the golf, there was so much else to speak about and laugh about too. Louise <coughs> told me that Mike was never one for mechanical things, however. They often confused him. Spanners and electronics weren't his cup of tea. In this vein, Sonia Davis, who's here today from Bermuda, who was Mike's Bermuda office manager for 11 years, recalls the kerfuffle whenever Mike's scooter ran out of gas somewhere or other on the island, which was pretty frequently, and his <coughs> agitation when the cable TV stopped working, it was usually down to the batteries in the handset. There will be an immediate call for urgent assistance, and it was, as always, Sonia and Louise who sorted it all out. Business was his strength, however. He knew what made an organisation tick. How to value people, how to listen to them, and how to understand their basic needs. Over the years, Mike brought out the very best in people for the good of the business and gave individuals the confidence to achieve. Sometimes, however, the calm was an omen of an impending storm, a sort of red sky in the morning, you know. I mean. 
Military experts will tell you that the French invented the Exocet missile. <laughs> Believe me, it wasn't bad. It was mine. An Exocet for the uninitiated amongst you was an armor-piercing email that was targeted without mercy as an individual and usually without warning. If you saw the words Mike Ness in your inbox, you always open the email very carefully with trepidation, with narrowed eyes and sweaty palms. The words contained within the next set were hit with the ferocity of a tornado. A string of never-ending uppercase letters pierced your heart and reduced grown men to tears. Believe me, I know. <laughs> As for the scuds, let's not go there. Safe to say that Saddam Hussein thought that he was the first kid on the block. You know what, though? Mike can be tough, but he never bore a grudge. And any issues were forgotten almost immediately. The loyalty he engendered with those in his team transcended everything else. Mike inspired us to work together for the good of the business. McCollum remembers Mike's incredible grasp of commerce and his unequaled knowledge of the industry. He always had a common sense approach and nine times out of ten, he was right. After Bermuda, Mike and Louise moved to Switzerland. They loved their life there and very much and once again made many good friends. They were seen as a perfectly matched couple with Louise supporting Mike seamlessly. Together they enjoyed sports and trivia, many interesting conversations over long dinners with friends. Christine Upton shared with me how welcome they were when she moved there with her son from France. He helped them settle, research schools, and generally ease the men. He was a true gentleman and a friend. While in Switzerland, they got married. In Scotland, in fact, it was a very private affair with Louise's family and attendants. As Mike's sole witness, Dave Hoskins <coughs> described it to me this week as a truly special moment for the couple and one of the proudest moments of Dave's life as well. He'd been so very close to Mike over so many years and saw him as a true friend and confident. Dave was immensely sorry not to be with us all today. Mike and Louise were together for almost 22 years. Fenella shared with Louise a conversation she had with Mike. He said to her, Mike, Make no mistake, Louise is the best thing to have happened to you. You don't deserve her and I hope she'll put up with you. <laughs> As Fenella recalled, Mike was, Mike was larger than life and often difficult. She used to remind him that Louise gave him a life outside of the company with friends, a social life, hobbies and a home, none of which he had for years until now. Like all of us, Fenella just wishes it could have been for longer. Louise and Mike's long-term buddy King notes how friends would always laugh about Louise pampering Mike. There were endless stories, like her putting on the snow chains while Mike sat in the car. <laughs> <laughs> her leaping over walls to break into the house because the electric gates would not work <laughs> while Mike sat in the car. <laughs> Louise's support of Mike was extraordinary and her social ability helped him fit in wherever Mike's hectic work took him. Mike always came first with Louise. In Kim's words, Mike was a loyal friend and any request for help was always immediately answered. Mike's memorable laugh and smile will be missed but never forgotten, as will the next team will enjoy for so many years. Kim also said, I cannot imagine any father being more generous or doting than Mike was. Justin is lucky to have a son like, uh, to have a father like Mike. Justin says his father had no problem with training. Justin would scratch his head in disbelief over complex routes that Mike would sometimes take to save money, even though he heard hours and hours of extra travel time. And he would always get involved in planning Justin's travel too. <laughs> He'd write pages of notes and suggestions for everyone to do, usually taking over the process of booking half of it and calling back later with more ideas. This year was their crown achievement. By the time Justin left Melbourne for El Salvador earlier this year, they had successfully booked Justin's most complicated trip to date. <laughs> Over five months of travel using trains, planes, and automobiles. It took in much of the Americas and was then planned to meet up with Mike and Louise in Europe. While the trip may have been a little disrupted, Justin is here today, and I know Mike will be proud of Justin. Bringing things up to date. I coincidentally bumped into Mike at Victoria Station when I was heading to Vienna four years ago. It was the morning of the day he was taken there. <coughs> Mike was on his way to meet Stanley and the family and the board at Grover Place and was his usual confident and positive self. 
We chatted for a while, and he was happy and as upbeat as ever. He took the time to ask about my family, and as so often, as he did for both me and for Gavin, he gave me useful thoughts on the business. You know, Justin told me last week he feels it was most appropriate that he was gathered where his father actually fell, because this is a man who thought nothing of flying from London to New Zealand for a short meeting and then back again a few hours later. In the words of Stanley Tolman, Mike was one of those special people who never shirked a journey. And this was said in the context of travel, but it was actually equally true in regards to the journeys through his life, through his business, with his friends and with his family. Mike may sometimes have seemed a very private individual, but to those of us who knew him, he would always be remembered as a lovely person, a kind, generous, thoughtful and patient man, extremely loyal to those he loved and to the very many people who had the privilege to work with him. We're all missing great. <coughs> husband to Louise, father to Justin, colleague, mentor, and friend of so many, rest in peace. Okay. 